Scott, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I am uh, so excited to talk about your current challenge, to talk about actually just about anything. So I, I will give you the brief 30-second rundown of how I found you, and then I'll, uh, you know, maybe I'll let you talk on this podcast too. Um, so I found you only very recently, which is a crime, FYI. I don't even remember who put your name in front of me. Oh, I do actually. It, well, I won't say their name. It was somebody in John Dykstra's community who I respect. And they're like, oh, you're like thinking about some Facebook stuff. Well, like, you should go check out what Scott's doing in his current challenge. And I was like, who's Scott? I don't know. And to give you a compliment, this was like internet love at first sight for me, Scott. I, I was like, wait, who is this person writing this content? I, I joined the email list and I've been reading your weekly updates. And I went back through a few archives and I was like, I like the way this person writes, communicates, um, shares what you're going through in your own journey right? Like revealing the, the, the metagame, how you do what you do. Uh, I found it insanely personal and in a good way. And also you're just, you seem to be insanely impressive. <laughs> Everything you've done. And I'm like, I have to like know this person and interview Scott. So that's how I found you, Scott. But obviously, you know, this is our first date. We, we only met each other 10 minutes ago off air. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't you give me the first date version of who you are? And specifically for anybody listening, I'll, uh, I'll phrase it like this. How did you get involved in this whole world? The online business, building websites, you've had a few acquired. What were you doing before all this? And then how do you kind of like find your way into what you currently do? Yeah, uh, thanks. I mean, I'll, I'll really quickly say that I actually found you before you found me. And I, already, I already told you this. But oh, that's right. I yes. was, yeah, I was just um, in the morning with my coffee. I'll just like watch random YouTube stuff. And I, I searched something by SEO. I was like, I should probably brush up, just see what's out there, see if there's any groundbreaking stuff. And in your video, the, the 13, um, I forget exactly the title, but I clicked it. And I, and I sent it to a few people because I thought it was just a great, it was like kind of common sense rundown. So that's why it was, it was so... Uh, it was just so funny to, to see you pop up on my Twitter. And I was like, hey, yeah. I, I know this guy. So, this is a great first date so far, Scott. We're, yeah, no, awesome. it's great. Yeah, so so I you know I found you first. <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, so as far as I go, uh, you know, in my adult, well, even before I became an adult, I have been doing this stuff forever. So, so that goes back to about 1997, 1998. Wow. I was messing around with like angelfire.com where you just like build a website and I – I had what it was hard to track back then, but I, I believe it was like the biggest Goldeneye 007 website oh, on the internet. I think it was. Than Game Facts? Wasn't that what it was? Game Facts? Do you remember Game Well, Facts? I mean, I guess I'm saying like a dedicated to the game oh, website. Okay. Right. It was pretty big. And, and that just kind of hooked me from the beginning. And then, but I just did this stuff for, for fun um, for years. And then I, I started college in 2000. And graduated in 2004, and I'm an ad major. So I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to be a be an ad executive. I'm going to basically write copy for print, and then I'm going to work my way up. And maybe, you know, by the time I'm 30, I'll make 70k a year or something. That was my my <laughs> thought. Um, so, but I was always interested in the in the internet and building websites. So I got a job out. Well, I, I took an internship my senior year for. Um, an SEO company, a web development company, and they did SEO, and I was in the SEO department. This is 04. Yeah, I was about um, to say, this is still early. Yeah, this is like I'm going in to HTML files and, and um, <laughs> editing uh, titles, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say we keyword stuffed, but we kind of keyword stuffed. Not really like black hat. We were white. It was a white hat company, but, um, you know, everything seems seems weird looking back to then. But anyway, true. <laughs> so I, uh, I was building stuff on the side and um, just nothing – nothing crazy. I had a Halo 2 website that started to pick up a little steam. And my boss at the time had a, a dating website, actually. And so we would just share like, oh, what are you doing with your side project? And um, he read, and, and I don't know how much you remember back in those days. I'm not even sure how old you are or anything like that. But um, uh, Joel Calm. So Joel Calm is kind of an internet legend. And uh, my boss sent me an ebook of his. And <laughs> that was basically how to optimize AdSense to make more money. It was like, until you, it, it's so obvious at this point, but back then I'm just putting up, it, like my website had a dark background and it's just like a white ad with blue text and like everybody on earth knows it's an ad. It's like nobody's yep. clicking it. 
Um, so he, he was just like, yeah, blend it in and put it here and put it here. And that's whenever I went from like, I was making like a buck a day, or like two bucks a day. And I went from like five to $20 in like a week just by changing the ads. And from that moment, I was, I was hooked. So mm-hmm. I just started reading and learning everything. And to kind of, you know, answer your question of how I got into this, it's like kind of always been into it, but I was only at that job about a year and a half before I was making way more money on the side. Um, I started a video say about the same time as YouTube was, was rising. Um, it wasn't a competitor to YouTube. I was just basically one of the first people to search YouTube for videos that nobody had seen curation and, and posting them. And, um, I outline all this on my, on my site, but, um, it was, a it was a site very oriented toward young males. So not, 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 a, not adult content, but like, um, <laughs> accidents like accidents His first date's taking a very fight. odd turn <laughs> yeah. yeah but like you know f- fights and things like that things that yeah. were like nobody was desensitized like you see a fight every time you open up any browser now that's being posted everywhere but back then people just they weren't desensitized to what was actually starting to be uploaded to the internet because broadband was finally taking off blah 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 yep. um and that I, I ended up making in a month what i what i was making at a year or, or in a year at my job and it was like you know, I'm just going to take this money. I've got a year to figure this out. Worst case scenario, I'll get another job. And I, I just, I never looked back since. Hmm. So that's, that's kind of the, the origin story that ultimately led to the, yeah. the bigger, the bigger plays. Yeah. I understood most of those references. So I'm 37 and you mentioned like the top two, uh, like first person shooters from that era, like GoldenEye, yeah. Halo 2. Exactly. Oh, Halo 2. It's like, what are the first uh, non LAN parties that I got to play like multiplayer, like over the internet. That was, that was actually like the first game that I got to do that with really. Yeah. And I was just blown away by it. Mm-hmm. Not that we could talk about gaming, but the, the point is like, I definitely look for websites for that stuff. <laughs> 2003, 2004. Um, so our, our, our first date goes back maybe farther than we, we realized. So, you know, maybe it went to great. my website. <laughs> Hit it off. That's fantastic. <laughs> Better than the first date with my wife. Um, <laughs> Gotta say that. Yeah, it was a bad joke. All right. So I kind of want to skip ahead a little bit yep. and talk about the challenge. So I, I I'll also just say you wrote a post. Actually, I don't know when you wrote it. I, I saw it a couple of weeks ago. It might be super old at this point. It's basically detailing some of your acquisitions. Which one was it? You know the one like, oh, Viral Nova. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The untold backstory of how I made four hundred thousand four thirty nine a lot of money in one month so on so forth i don't when you published that but i I read it a couple of weeks ago so i want to just impress upon people actually i don't i want to have you impress upon people i want to hear sorry this is a this is this is going awkwardly because i'm trying to like merge topics here let me just share with you my notes i have some bullet points here um the big idea, there are two big ideas that I want to talk about and I want to ask you about. Honest to God, by the way, this is just free consulting for me. I tell people this all the time on my podcast. Like, you just want free consulting from really smart people, just start a podcast. It's awesome. Uh, not, not to not to really quickly interrupt, but before this, on my walk with my dog, I listened to your podcast with um, uh, the niche site twin guy. And, and, you, uh, and you, you had basically said that in there. You're like... <laughs> You're like, this is great. I'm just going to take what everybody tells me and mash yep. it all together. It's like, yeah, that's smart. You should. That's awesome. <laughs> um, that's the only reason I continue to do this podcast, honestly. <laughs> like, do even blog doesn't make that much money at all. But I I, 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 w- I wouldn't ask you, but I, I was wondering that because it's it's a good site. It really is. I like it. Well, thank you. I, I, mean, I, I didn't, I didn't comb through the whole thing, but it looks good to me. I just only saw the good parts. Um, no, so a couple of bullet points. Number one would be diversifying away from only Google, <laughs> only SEO traffic, building niche sites, content sites, authority sites, whatever, just for Google search. I am looking at my own business and thinking like, hmm, yeah, okay, I may or may not have a leverage problem in the near future, like in the next couple of years. I don't know. And nobody knows really. But one thing I see from your own stuff is talking or leaning more heavily into Email. I mean, uh, everybody's kind of leaning into, you know, building and monetizing the email list. But it seems like that is like one of your biggest priorities in your current challenge and your other stuff, which I want to ask you about. But also Facebook. 
let me give you the the twenty second backstory, Scott. So I have experience, a lot of experience running Facebook ads over the years. I worked for a very small agency for a hot minute, very small, only a couple of people, but I got to work with clients, multiple clients, and I got to spend like in the several thousand, thousands of dollars every month. And I've also run Facebook ads for my own business on and off since like maybe 2016 or so in the, in the very hundreds of dollars a month <laughs> budget, right? Um, but when COVID hit, maybe like late 2020 ish this was like right at the, about the time where apple was like changing some things and people in the facebook ad community were like it's dead right it's not but people were like it's dead ad costs are skyrocketing mine did skyrocket over the course of like a month and i also wasn't like checking every day and optimizing and creating new ad create i wasn't doing any of that so i, I stopped and i have not run a single facebook ad since then but I see a lot of the stuff that you are doing currently. And I'm like, well, he's doing things a little different than I, that I had in my brain. Like, here's what Facebook ads should be in my brain. You're doing like the opposite or a lot of the opposite things running a uh, page, like campaigns, by the way, like five years ago, people were like, don't do it. It's a waste of money. It's like conversions or bust, whatever. So those are my two like broad areas. I, I, I really want to get out of Scott's brain. So let's start with this Scott and, I'll, uh, yeah, let me pose it. Just let's start with this. Why don't you walk us through your current challenge? Like, just give us the brief overview of how it started on Twitter and then kind of what the, what the idea is from your current challenge. And then we'll, we'll branch off from there. Yeah. So, um, the, I would say the, the origin of the challenge is actually pretty interesting, not to hype myself a little, but it actually started from a personal challenge to myself. Um, I challenged myself to come back to Twitter and tweet for 30 days and see what happened. Um, I actually have video from the first four or five days where I was recording everything I was doing, going through my profile, like I was comparing it to other people's profiles where I think they're messing up. And then I was showing how, you know, I can change mine, blah, blah, blah. And um, it was like, yeah, it was like three, four days in or something. I got a couple decent sized retweets, grew by 500, 600, something like that. And then it was like day eight or nine whenever I was like, oh, I need to tweet something. This 30 day challenge is I tweet once a day. <laughs> and I'm, down, I'm down in, in, on, in like the, the, the spare room watching like TV and I've got Twitter up and I had written some kind of half-assed thing. And my wife was like, hey, dinner's almost ready. And I was like, okay, um, I'll be up in a second. So just like sort of out of on a whim, I was like, I bet you I could still make a ton of, I, I, bet, I, I shouldn't say I still make a ton of money. I could still turn some small amount of money into a lot of money. I was like, I bet I could do that. So I just wrote the original tweet that says something to the effect of 20 K to 500 K in one year, working two hours a day. And I closed my laptop, went upstairs. And like the next morning it, I had added like 2000 followers. So it went crazy. This, this, the challenge itself, the, the 30 day Twitter challenge gave rise to this challenge because so many people were interested. So I went from, I had like 2000 followers, which were all from the viral Nova days. So like most of them didn't even care about me and websites. They had followed me for, for different reasons. A lot of like traditional journalists and stuff just to like heckle me and stuff, I think, because they didn't like it very much. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so it, it ballooned to like 9,000 and then 11 and 13 or whatever it's at. And I was like, I got I to gotta do this, right? Because leading up to this is whenever I wrote um, a whole bunch of stuff on my, my site, a bunch of the guides and things like that. So I was like, well, this is sort of a great way to promote what I'm trying to teach by showing what I'm teaching, right? Except mm -hmm. I was like, I can't really show the site itself because it could be sabotaged if it's getting copied. Like you can very easily reverse engineer like, you know, ads are now public on Facebook. You can just go see what I'm running if you knew the page. So I had to kind of keep it under under wraps, which which has been a little bit of a, a bummer. But on the flip side, the challenge got a bunch of publicity. So it wouldn't be fair for me to maybe get backlinks to the to the challenge website either. So mm -hmm. um so anyway, so that that's what that's kind of what led to the challenge. And I, I already forget your other part of that question. Well I just want to I actually just want to repeat the one sentence version of your your current challenge, not the Twitter challenge, but the current thing you're trying right. to do. Yeah. You are trying to build a $500,000 website and sell it 
or or able to sell by mid September, I think. So next I, year. I worded it to sell. You know, if it's if it's on a trajectory of being valued at that, right. I'll, I'll I'll call it a win. Yeah. Okay. Um, with a budget of twenty k, twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So that's that's the big gist to my ears. Um, so first of all, I I'll, I'll continue patting you on the back. Um, I like what you've been sharing. I feel like there's a lot of gold nuggets to um, to reading your stuff. Not for a – this is hard to – I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this. I feel like if somebody was looking for a very specific thing to learn or to fix a problem they're struggling with, that's not necessarily what I've been getting from your weekly newsletters. But rather – and I would argue way more beneficial, honestly, is I just open it up, not even giving a shit about your headline, <laughs> right? I just open it up now because I understand that I'm probably going to get a little bit of insight on something. The way that you share your estimates, um, you last week, the week before, I don't remember which, was basically diving down to, I'm projecting out how this might be valued at 500K. Here's my open rates. Here's my click-through rates. Here's how much I spent on conversion campaigns. Here's how much I spent on page like campaigns. And here's what I got me. Like the numbers, the numbers, the numbers, and then kind of re-engineering how it might work. And then I also like that you're generally like, actually, here's some other shitty things. <laughs> Here, uh, here's things I do not have control over. It's It's a big mix of big picture stuff and small picture stuff, SEO, Facebook, just building a business. It's a cool experiment. So it's not very specific, but I, I just want to, I just want to give you that compliment. I, I open it now just to be like, I don't know what I'm going to learn. I kind of don't care, but I know that I'm going to get something interesting out of this, a and new that, way of looking at things. That's exactly what I want. So okay. that, that's, that is a great compliment because that's exactly what I want. I mean, there, there's no way that I can say, uh, push this button, this button, this button, and you're going to have a website that does this. There's just no way. It, it's not realistic. And, and, you know, if I package that in, into into a course, you know, at the end of the day, you still have to tell people, like, it's it's a course. Get something from it, right? So that's yeah. kind of my goal every time. And, and if I ever write the email out and I don't feel like I, I – the weekly challenge email, like if I don't feel like I had enough value, I'll literally just, like, something that I've just been wanting to something that I should put as an article on my site. I'll just write it in the email. Like, I, so, <laughs> yeah. so I'm really, I'm really glad that, that, and I hope that's what everybody's doing. I, you know, just picking up some nugget of information in each email that you can take away and apply it or at least learn. Yeah, for sure. So let's, let's talk about the strategy, email list, Facebook ads, and then SEO walk us through the big picture of how this is going to happen or how you're hoping it happens, right? What have you done so far? And then what are you going to be doing until I don't know, September next year? Yeah. So the, the first thing that I wanted to say about that. Uh, so in that uh, interview with, with Mike of, of the niche site twins, um, which he's his, that was great, by the way, that guy knows what he's talking about. Um, he's, he's a little more, you know, SEO e than me, but he's great. Like I was, he was very, SEO. very, is very impressive. Um, that being said, whenever I hear people like, like him say, you know, you're not going to get any traffic for at least six months in, in some other will say, you're gonna have to do this for over a year. Like I can't do that. And I know a lot of people can't do that. Hmm. So the Facebook stuff is very geared around just, as I say, as I call it dopamine hits, it's, it's just about like, like he was describing, and not to keep referencing that or people are going to click off this and just go watch that one. But he was, he was <laughs> referencing um, um, uh, whenever he made his first $4 six months in. And, you know, I'm two and a half months-ish in. And, you know, it, it's, it's on a pace this month, which is early in the month to make probably close to a thousand bucks. Now, granted, I put money into it. And in his situation, he probably didn't put anything into it. But the bigger point here is that that $4, as he described it, was like motivation, like, holy cow, $4. And if you go all the way back to my Halo 2 site, that was how I felt, too. It was like a buck became five, became 10. It's like, why can't 10 become 100? And then, you know, in Ohio, where I used to live, it's I can I can, you know, just live off that and and keep building. Um, So that was I just wanted to like preface preface 
why I still am a big believer in the Facebook strategy, because I yeah. think it does give you instant feedback. Your, your content, even if it's in shareable meme photo form, you're starting to feel your audience a little bit better. You're just starting to understand them. And then yeah. that can translate to the site itself. So there's a lot of intangibles to why I think Facebook is still uh, a viable option. And I also think one thing that is so strange to me is like Facebook traffic was like here, right? It was like amazing. It was great. I mean, my viral Nova story is the epitome of, of, of those days, but like just because it became 10% of that people are like, Oh, it's dead. Well, yeah. 10% of a lot is still like good. It's still good traffic. It's, it's not terrible by any means. It really does come down to to your niche, though. Like there are some, like some people will email me and just be like, mm-hmm. I, "I don't know how you're getting likes this cheap. It doesn't make any sense." I'm like, well, what what do you? What's your niche? You know? And it's like, oh, rock climbing for twenty two year old buff dudes or something. You know? Like it's not gonna probably do as well as as mine, which I think I've openly said it's, it's geared toward like forty plus women, which was a deliberate choice on my end because I mean I challenged myself for a one year timeline, I needed to kind of pick something that was going to give me, give me the best, yeah. the best bet. So that, that, um, I forget if you asked something specific about Facebook, but like, that's why. Well, let's, let's I actually wait. It. Let's, let's wait on the Facebook specifically, but what is, how does that play into the email and SEO? In other words, like what's the big picture strategy of the challenge of how it gets a following and how it makes money? Does that make any sense? Yes. Uh, yeah, totally. So, so Facebook, obviously you build a page and you're going to get some traffic from it. I kind of treat it as, as gravy, but the big thing, the big takeaway, and this is what I did with, with my, my last company, which was a travel site. Um, almost you should treat Facebook as how do I get somebody off of Facebook and keep them permanently for myself, which is an email capture, or whatever it might be. So that's kind of how I see Facebook now, just just whether it's through lead gen ads or um, the traffic that you do get whenever they land on the site, how do you how do you keep them in email, pretty much in email. Um, and, and, I'm, and I know that you you kind of seem to allude a little bit to everybody is doing email, but I think I think I think you might I feel like that's a little skewed because everybody like me and you are doing email and like this is the world we're in. But there are a lot of niches out there that are not taking advantage of email at all. And I, I've done um, diligence on probably 50 plus sites because I was just going to buy a site like six months ago. I haven't bought any. Um, but so many people will be like, yeah, the email list is 20, 20K. I'm like, well, how much traffic are you getting from them? Oh, I haven't sent to them in a year. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm serious. Like, re- like recipe sites are so guilty of being like, I'm going to plaster this big old sign up form and then I'm never going to talk to you again. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? So um, there's a lot of value in, in email still from just strictly a content standpoint. Um, so, so that's, I, I, I think I'm all over the place too, but like Facebook is Facebook for like short term kind of wins, do everything you can to, to, to keep people in your email list. And mm-hmm. then the whole time you're just, you're writing, you're writing good content on the site, which which is the Google Play. It's the Google Play to me is, is separate. I mean, I don't really yeah. think those really tie together, but that's hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. And revenue comes how? Or how do you imagine it coming like six to nine months from now? Revenue is probably going to be just primarily display ads. Like right. I don't I don't have an affiliate play in mind. Um, I, in the back of my mind, I throw around, okay, this particular niche could probably do okay with merch, like merchandise, but um, it's mo- let's just say display. My, my okay. plan is display only. Excuse me. All right. So let's, let's dive into Facebook specifically for a second. Spending money on page likes. Again, this is, you actually weren't the first per- It was It was somebody in D- John Dykstra's community who I was talking to about this specifically, and they were also... Uh, for about a past, the past year or so, they've been spending money for page likes, which just blew my mind. Because again, I've been out of the game for a couple of years, and like five years ago, you never, you never saw anybody doing this, or at least people were, I'm sure, but it wasn't the the general advice. So break it down for us, Scott. Why would anybody spend money for page likes? Well, I think a lot of times, whenever everybody goes one way, 
it creates an, an opening. So, you know, I don't think that my, my following or, or at this point, maybe yours, I don't know, but is big enough to really ruin that. But I mean, I think, I think it's just the, the whole industry decides something and then everybody follows. And, mm-hmm. and the one example I always give was in 2011, 12, every, everything that came out of, especially like New York media is email's dead. Young people don't use email. They're never going to use email. And now, now, you know, Morning Brew, Axios, all these have like yep. completely changed the game. And, and I'd like to say, well, I, know, I would like to say, but like whenever everybody was saying email was dead, I was sending to a 750,000 subscriber list, which was which was generating around 70K a month on its own, just in display at display revenue from th- that traffic. So whenever you kind of have been in this game long enough and you see what everybody's everybody's saying, I'm, I don't even think that's air quote worthy. But what everybody's saying, yeah. and and then you realize, oh, well, they're they're not necessarily right. Then you just kind of like you you keep you keep figuring it out on your own, and and I think that that's what that's what tends to give those crazy openings, like the viral Nova story, where one person can make so much money so fast, and it's it's a little bit of a far fetched, not far fetched, but it's it's that's very tough. That was like timing, a lot of perfect stuff aligned for that but you you do find openings whenever everybody tends to believe the mm-hmm. same thing um yeah so for page likes are you you correct me if i'm wrong the the picture in my head is you spend money asking people to like your page and then you post organically once a day twice a day five times a day i don't know One to and two. just d- trying to drive traffic is that like the big picture uh, Did I get that right? Uh, well, driving engagement too. So like I'll, I'll post some sort of photo, like mm. whether it's memes, not really, I don't really think like what I'm posting would be considered a meme, but like you can use that as an example, just something that's going to get a bunch of likes and shares, keep people talking, like grow the page a little more organically. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, and then whenever you have like a, a great piece of content posting that as well, which gets what 10% of the reach of a photo, cool. but it's still, you know, it's, it's, it's traffic, it's money. It keeps things going. You start to learn what exactly makes your audience, you know, what makes them click. Like you just, you're learning all the time. And, and that's why the SEO only um, kind of strategy, I just can't do it because I, I need quicker feedback or, or I'll give up. <laughs> hmm. So, and I think a lot of people are that way, but anyway, yes, you're right. That, that is the strategy. Um, there's something we have not talked about, which is the, topics or the content the type of content that you're producing and i don't know if this was actually in your content or somebody else's email i've been thinking about this a lot recently um oh i also emailed you a bit of a question here a lot of times especially for like these uh what did you say like these seo people like the niche site yeah. twitter people right yeah. um their content is very long tail info post question answer it's like that sort of content mind numbing would be another way (laughs) for for a lot of people plumbing like i'm gonna start a site on plumbing and then it's gonna be how do i do this how do we do this yeah um that's not the content that probably performs best Mm -hmm. on your version of facebook you mentioned niches earlier so let's talk about that a little bit i have a few questions we'll start with this one for people listening to this podcast who already have a site, already have a niche, will theirs work on Facebook? What are some of the questions or filters they can ask themselves to better understand, hey, can I use some of Scott's strategy? Does that make any sense? Like- it, it absolutely does. It's it's a very hard question to answer because it really does depend on the, on the niche. Um, I do believe that mm-hmm. most of them do have a play on 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 multiple platforms. Um, like, I mean, if we take the plumbing one, for example, this is not going to be great, but like, if we use the plumbing (laughs) one, for example, like there's, there are actually a lot of things related to plumbing. Like, for example, if, if somebody, if somebody had like an informational plumbing website, like what in, in they're they're the creator, like that's their, their number one passion is plumbing. Their number two is websites. Does that person exist? I don't know. I, don't but know. If they, I do if know they somebody do. with a plumbing niche site, but yeah. I mean, yeah, this, this is probably, um, there's, there's, there's probably opportunity there. But anyway, um, 
stuff, for example, this is, again, trying to relate it to plumbing, but there's, there people on Facebook love, for example, DIY stuff. So how do you relate plumbing to something DIY? Mm -hmm. Like somebody maybe, I don't know, like (laughs) ran that re-ran their plumbing. Like they had this problem, right? And like, they had this like hideous bathroom and the plumbing was the problem. And they came up with a super creative way to rerun the plumbing. And it's just, it looks cool and it looks awesome. And like, you would have never seen it before. Like that could live on Facebook and actually do well. That mm-hmm. That's just an off the top of the head kind of example. Now you asked me a good question in email. What do you do with, do you continue? Do you like no index that? Like, what do you do? Um, mm-hmm. And, and does it fit your site, right? If like, if you have this very, I am the go-to source for all things serious plumbing. And then all of a sudden you have this like random, either something funny with plumbing or whatever. Buzzworthy something. stuff, like it, a little exactly. bit of clickbaity, like viral yeah. sort of plumbing content. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you would, I think, I, I don't think Google cares about that, but like, I'm not the SEO person. Maybe, maybe we can ask somebody else that question. I've never had a problem with it because it's okay if that article doesn't rank, right? Like you can, like that, that's the thing. Like these niche people are, are great. They do. And I, and I follow several of them. I think they're, they're, they're teaching really great stuff. So I'm definitely not saying anything bad about them. I've learned a lot from them. I subscribe to all their newsletters, um, but they act like you can't write to entertain. And, and I, I like mm-hmm. my number one bullet point over there, literally it's number one. It says, I like to entertain. That's all it says. And I wanted to like say like, that's what I like to do. I want people to smile or laugh or cry tears of joy or whatever it might be. I enjoy creating content that entertains or otherwise um, makes people feel something. So I'm not really your informational guy. Um, Now, my last company, the travel one, I feel like was perfect because it, it hit the perfect combination of both so that's why I was, it was doing 100k visits a day from google 400k from facebook like it was a beast and well, it still is a beast it's actually a bigger beast now without me so i don't know what that says but i, I like to think i gave them a, a good a good thing to run with it's with a bigger yeah. company now but anyway um uh so it was for for example like you see this on yelp and stuff like the 10 best taco restaurants in hmm. what yeah, i think you're from michigan in ann arbor michigan or something like that and um, that is great because you can, you're, the writer can write it in an entertaining way. They've curated this list that's specific to them. So it's, it's, it's technically unique content. And, and some, some of the writers that I had were very, very entertaining, but it also would rank number one for taco joints in, in Ann Arbor. So mm-hmm. it, I don't know if that does, by the way. So I don't know. You can try to find the site by doing that. I have no idea. <laughs> but anyway, that's, um, so, so there are certain ways that it's like a perfect perfect marriage for multi yeah. multi-platform content. And, and that's, and that's something that I would advise somebody even who is trying to figure out what to pick. Can you write content that naturally works for both in that niche? And if you can, that's great. If you can't, it's fine too. It's like whatever works for you. It's just, it's the, it's the best of all worlds, right? If it's yeah. perfect for everything. I, I'm going to avoid ranting about this for like 20 minutes, but I could, This idea of, I like to entertain, I wrote that down in air quotes, even in boring plumbing articles. Uh, So this is, we we actually talked about Glenn also off air, on air, I don't even remember. My brain's fuzzy. I don't either. Um, I had a lot of caffeine today, Scott. (laughs) Um, We talked about Glenn and something Glenn said on our podcast together that at the time was like really novel to me. He was like, not enough SEOs are thinking about branding. Branding. It's a very funny word. It's very like uh, high marketing. <laughs> like no one knows what the hell it actually means because it can mean just about anything. But something Glenn and I talked about was at the time, again, pretty new, this idea that users are going to Google, they're searching for something, and they're combing search results not based on title or description, but based on the URL. Like, I will go and search something related to digital marketing and maybe I just love HubSpot. I actually don't, but like that HubSpot's everywhere, right? For all this digital marketing stuff. And I can think of at the time we were talking, I was like, oh my God, I do that. I search something and I'm like, does do even blog have an article on this? Like page one, page one, page one, do even blog. Cool. Click. Right. That is like, in my opinion, SEO branding. What can you do to make that happen? 
um, I could rant for 20 minutes on this, but one thing I and well, hell, I've mentioned John like 20 times on this podcast already. He's actually been talking about branding a lot as well on his newsletter. And it's the same sort of thing, like entertain. I like to entertain. I like to make people laugh or feel something or tell a story. And I am actually looking to, in my own stuff, incorporate that even more than I have in the past. Just because AI can't do it, and I can. (laughs) Right? Like, how am I going to compete with these people as AI gets better, GPT crap? Like, I want to be a human. How do I be that? How do I do that? How do I create a brand? for SEO and, and Facebook or whatever. Okay. I'm going to cut myself off because I would rant further on that. But something you said, um, what was it? Oh, you know what? I actually have another question specifically for page likes. And then we can talk about other stuff. I promise. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, I'm so interested in this. You don't have to give like exact words. Cause I don't want people to like literally copy and paste anything you say, but I've literally never ran a page like campaign before in my life. Roughly speaking, what do you say? For those ad, what is the creative on that? Like, hey, I've, like this page if you like plumbing. Yes, yes, pretty much. I have okay. I have spent right. hundreds of thousands of dollars on page likes over the last ten years, and that works the best. What I do, and I don't have any problem because you can just kind of plug your. And this doesn't work for all niches. It's important that I say that again. There's just some mm-hmm. things, like for example, like if I said, "Do you like plumbing?" <laughs> like, I mean. Yeah, that's yeah. going to cost a lot. Like who just likes plumbing, like things like plumbing, electrical, things like that. Those are perfect for SEO plays because you're only looking for it when you need help. So like, you're not just going to be mm-hmm. mindlessly mm-hmm. browsing Facebook and being like, Oh, I love plumbing. The last time I had a leaky toilet, it was my best day of my life. And, and then, and then like, it. so it doesn't work for everything. Um, but I have just literally put, and I, and I have this in one of my, one of my articles, just, it's just like, and then whatever, whatever it is, question mark, then like our page, mm-hmm. something, I mean, it's a little more than that, but like pretty much that's two, two things. If, or, or if you like blah, then yeah. you'll love, you'll love this, this page. Should and we talk it, about it a different works? niche? Should I, should I come clean with one, my next project? Yeah. Niche? I'm going to share the niche publicly before I even create it. I've never done that before. Uh, pizza. The 10 okay. second version, by the way, is that I'm obsessed with pizza. I make my own at home. I've been making my own dough. I got pizza ovens. I just had a Detroit style pizza that I made earlier today. I know a lot about making dough. I'm part of pizza making communities like DIY. That's that's actually going to be my niche niche site. That's going to be my next uh, next project. And so maybe we can I get free consulting for Pete, right? <laughs> <laughs> so if we talk about this, I'm thinking like, do you love making pizza at home? Like our page or something like that. Uh, it's just what my brain was going through as you were giving. Well, that I mean, that is essentially what my what I described. Um, yep. So totally. it would be for people who want to make pizza, not just eat pizza. Is that is that correct? Well, I think. Well, we're talking about different types of content. There are certainly that like search looking for answers content. I've already done a little bit of the research and homework and whatnot. That is more like the plumbing side of things, right? Like people are searching for something. They want to know this. Here's an answer. Mm -hmm. But I could also see being not just the DIY pizza at home people. There could be more buzzworthy type of content, viral-ish type of content. For sure, around pizza, yeah. Tons of Um, I haven't specifically done a whole lot of that uh, at all. It was just an idea in my head. Um, But I can imagine there is. Oh, I remember what I was going to ask you about. You wrote this somewhere, this idea of <laughs> – it's going to sound a little bad. It's going to sound a little bit like stealing other people's ideas, and it is, just to be clear. But I had forgotten about this for so long. You, you had mentioned something about going to YouTube and looking at like what's performing well there and then like kind of reverse engineering that. Right. Do you remember this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. What What is that? Again, I, I've kind of gotten fuzzy in my head. Um, It was – I, I know exactly exactly what article it was on. I won't like look right now, but um, it it was actually interesting. Again, I'll reference um, the the niche niche twin guy because he said something similar. He's like, whenever I go to write an article about my, I think he said my Toyota doesn't start. I'm going to write this article. He's like, I'll just go watch like 25 minutes of YouTube videos and just mm. get like the expert rundown of it because if you go if you go pull in the top five sites for 
Toyota doesn't start, you're just going to regurgitate that content. And I agree with him. You're probably never going to outrank those, those five, even by repurposing or whatever. But if you go to YouTube and, and you find it uh, and, and then you turn it into article form, um, it's not, it's what I'm saying is not that much different than that. Really. It's I, I use it a lot to source ideas for an article. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's um, what and yeah, yeah. And I mean, with the filters and everything, you can surface so much stuff on YouTube. It's like, it's so powerful to come up with ideas for articles because you, this other medium that technically you're kind of competing, I guess, in, in Google, but because YouTube does rank high, obviously, for obvious reasons. Um, but you're not really competing with another, another content site. So that's why I just, I don't, were you asking a specific question about it? Or no, just like, I, it would be, actually, <laughs> no, it's going to be much better if I literally link people to the exact article that I, I read about this idea. And I'm looking at it right now. I actually bookmarked it and I opened it and you're like, I use YouTube as a content search platform. I find videos that are relevant to my niche that have millions of views already, which yeah. by the way, you can't do this in blog format really. Or not easily. You can't look at a blog post and be like, this one sucked. This one's Mm. good. But on YouTube, you're like, this video has 7.5 million views. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Right. This is performing well already. It's it's amazing. It's it's so powerful. And for some, it's so obvious too. And you can do the same thing on Facebook. You can go to a competitor's page and be like, look, this, I can see how many, you know, I I can't see the clicks, but I can see the likes or whatever and be like, oh, okay. Now it's free. It's like free, uh, free a b testing kind of that you didn't have to put it out there you're finding you're finding proven content ideas not i love that word proven right we toss that around all the time proven but that's what it is you're finding proven ideas that you can use in some way that's all that's all i meant exactly all right i will link people to that it's only like one like subheader in your article or your email there people just go read it i'll just link people there uh crap we're kind of running out of time let me oh you know what i'm finding my way back to my bullet points because i lost it just a second ago but while we're on bullet points you have some already and your first one was so good the whole like i like to entertain what what are some of your other your bullet points that you wrote down yeah we'll just we'll just kind of lightning round this if you want oh, I love this. um this isn't I, I some of this is random i have to figure it out okay like so one is that um as far as as far as the way, I'll skip that one. Go back to it if we have time. Um, <laughs> I, I really wanted to say that I think people get way too caught up in tools. They get just like too caught up into them. Oh, God, Some yeah. of them are nothing more than, than like a party trick. That's like what a friend and I always say. It's like, oh, yeah, this tool is just a party trick, right? Um, and again, in that, in that other podcast I listened to, you guys pretty much hit the nail on the head on all that. I just wanted to guess if there was more to talk about. I don't... I don't ever use, I mean, what do I use? I, I have an HRF subscription. I use it every once in a while just to get like a quick, okay, this is generally what's happening with, with that niche. Or, or maybe it can kick off some ideas for an article or something. That's about it. That's about as far as I go. You have people with crazy spreadsheets that are, you know, tracking every little thing. And I'm like, with the long tail effect, just create amazing content. And like, you're going to get picked up for the long tail. And especially as Google just continues to get better and not really giving a crap about your what keyword is in the article because it's going to infer that it's answering the question anyway. So yeah. there's a lot of common sense stuff to use for like on, on page SEO, and the, I'm not the guy to to go through that. But I just wanted to to bring that up. Uh, any thoughts on that before I? Uh, yeah, no, I'm going to respond to every lightning round thing you have here. Um, I just want to apologize to all my listeners and readers. <laughs> <laughs> for being the person that facilitated the tools, the new tools, the new fancy feature you got to check out, like all this other stuff for a long time. I And uh, the reason is, by the way, is at some point, once I started Do You Even Blog, I kind of felt it was my responsibility to try new tools and recommend them and review them and other stuff like mm. that. And it's only been the past, let's see, a little over a year, maybe like 14 or 15 months that I've I've started taking the opposite approach. And honestly, it's for my own sanity too. It's like, this stuff really doesn't matter nearly as much as we'd like to think it does. It just yeah. doesn't. And I think every single person I've ever had on my podcast or any any of my friends who do what we do, more than like four or five years, they pretty much all agree. They're just like, 
I mean, I'll tell you my tool stack for X, Y, Z, like whatever I'm doing. But just to be frank, like I could do these other tools. I don't really care. This is just what I have and I use now. And I, I don't think about this at all. <laughs> Where new people are like, all right, I need you to help walk me through the top 25 keyword research tools. Yeah. And, and not, not to, not to like, I'm not, you know, putting what you just said on, on blast, but a lot of it is because the, the, the teachers out there are telling them to do it. They're, 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 yeah. they're trying to make it a paint by numbers approach. And it's just not, you just sure. have to sit down and create great content. That, that's what you have to do. And then, and then, you know, these tools aren't useless. They're definitely not useless. They're just, they're tools. Sure. They're, it's a tool. It's, use it or don't use it, but it's not going to, it's not going to make a huge difference in my opinion compared to just focusing on content for sure. creating great content. Yeah. And it's funny. There are a lot of really specific questions that I've had for you that have popped in my brain. One or two of which I've asked such as the, you know, what does your creative look like for a page like campaign? I asked you that question. That one was pretty specific. Um, not that I'm that smart, but I already knew what you were going to say mm-hmm. and not because I'm a brilliant, you know, predict the future podcaster, but because that was pretty much common sense. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of, I was going to say people like me, but I mean, I, I'm, I'm totally guilty of this. I think anybody with an audience, me and you both, um, filled with creators and entrepreneurs and again, people like us and online business. I think we're all guilty of this a little bit. Um, Getting, I don't even know what I was going to say. Damn it. Lost my train of thought. Crap. I had something good and I forgot it, Scott. I, I really want to know. I know. Well, maybe so it'll come promoting back. Promoting the so, tools or something like that? Guilty uh, of promoting the tools or yeah, I don't you're know. going a different direction? I don't know. I was going a <laughs> different direction. Um, oh, well, we like to get into the nitty gritty about things. And oh, right. so I'll, I'll give you one example, then I'll shut up for a while. Keyword research is a really easy one to talk about because... As much as people understand what that process is for SEO, they're like, I still don't know how to do it, (laughs) right? Like I I use these tools or those tools and I like volume, like monthly search volume. Like, does it matter? Yes or no? How much should I target? Does it matter that Ahrefs is saying that there's no search volume for this? By the way, no, it doesn't matter because the like five of the top 25 sites on, or sorry, five of the top 25 posts on my my main project right now have zero search volume and hrefs at all it's not in their index not in their data set whatever um but the point i was trying to make I'll, i'll bring it back here is that a lot of strategy is actually more intuitive we just don't want to think it is right i would love to be like scott i need you to write me a formula for my facebook page like campaign Right, because I don't have the brain power or the guts to be creative and write one out. Give me the formula. Give me the cheat sheet. Give me the whatever it is. But the truth is, Scott is literally up in this podcast, like, yeah, just be like, do you love pizza? Do you do you freaking love making pizza at home? Like our page. Mm-hmm. Like that's it's pretty intuitive, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm ranting now, Scott. Oh, you, you're good. You brought out the worst, didn't I? And the best. <laughs> Scrape first date. Oh yeah, right. well, perfect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, all right, Scott. What's your go back to the bullet points? What what, what else you got? Uh, oh yeah, this is a good one. This might be my last one because I can't make sense of the other ones. Um, whenever like whenever a person decides to take their this is this is like goes back to what I was saying about like the niche site people like they go SEO first. They're good with that. They'll grind it out, and and that works for them. Other people like me are a little different. Some people like email, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, I don't work out, but I compared it to working out. And I believe that you have to do the approach that works for you. Like, what is it? Like, don't like listen to somebody like me, listen to somebody like you, listen to the every niche site person. But at the end of the day, if you're trying to force something that you just flat out don't want to do like me and keyword research, like I do not want to do keyword. I won't do it. Like I just won't do it. Like I, I'm not going to do it because I'll, I'll hate the project and I'll, I'll get, I'll, I'll quit. Um, mm-hmm. So I just, it's not it's just a bullet point to say like, like whenever it does come to working out, I don't, I don't lift, but I love, I love to hike. And, and sometimes I like to bike, but like, I hate running. I hate lifting. I hate doing sit-ups. I hate push-ups. I hate all this stuff, but you know, I stay relatively sort of healthy, 
by doing what works for me. So I think that that's what people really need to do with their website. Like follow the, the platform. If, like before my web, before I launched scottdelong.com, I was going to do YouTube. That's what I wanted to do. Like that's actually where I really want to, want to be, but I have all this like equipment and stuff that I just, they have I a never, ring right behind you. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I never really, I just never did it. And the, the editing part turned me off and I know you can outsource that, but like the editing turned me off and I was like, I love to write too. I just start writing, just sit down and start writing. So whatever it is that gets you working on your site the fastest, follow that. That's interesting. Why don't you think more people take that advice? Everybody hears that and they're like, yeah, that's true. You know, do the things I want to do, try not to do the things I don't want to do. Even if influencers shouting at me to do this or try this or you need to do this or you need to do that. Why don't you think more people follow that advice? Well, I think that that I think that might actually be why, because influencers are telling people to do every random thing. And I think people end up they overthink it. And, and what's the saying? It's like paralysis by analysis. Like that happens mm-hmm. to so many people because they, they and, and if you and if you're, say, like reading my weekly email and you know my backstory, you're gonna, well, I have to do what he's doing. Right. Like, like, look, he's had success. Well, you know, if you read the the. the million word viral nova thing you can see that it all came from just a place of discipline patience and being open-minded and and following what i was what i was just like seeing and what i wanted to jump into i i never i've never done i mean the most seo i ever did was that internship after college you know (laughs) (laughs) diving into html yeah (laughs) yeah so um i i think people just they they overthink it. And, and I think a lot of people don't think they have what it takes. I, I, and, and quite frankly, some people probably don't because, but it's mm-hmm. not because they're not intelligent enough. It's because they're not disciplined enough. They're not disciplined enough because they don't think they can do it. So then they pull the plug quick. So like if, if Mike, the niche twin guy would have pulled the plug in the first six months, which how many, what 99.9% of people probably would have, he wouldn't be sitting on whatever 30, 40 grand a month he's making right now or, or whatever. And, yeah. and I use his example because, because he had to be very patient to do that. Oh, and yeah. last thing I'll say about him, I, I swear I'm done talking about it. <laughs> I need it's, to connect you guys. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, yeah we, we follow each other on Twitter. No big deal. But, um, but he, he made a great point. His first, I think he said his first year of writing was just painful. And, and you do hit a point where, it becomes, and I'm sure you know this, it becomes easier in so many ways. You figure out systems as you see things working, it motivates you to keep going. So it's like, you really got to push through that, that mm-hmm. initial wanting to give up um, and, and just trust in yourself. I mean, I, I've, I've felt feelings of giving up on, on the challenge for sure. It's just like, what am I doing? What if I don't, what if I don't do this? Is everybody going to point and laugh at me? You know what I mean? Just st- not that, but stupid things like that. <laughs> But, yeah. you know, I just keep going. And I think it was like three weeks ago, I, I really just started feeling myself understand the audience and the content better. And and I feel pretty good about it again. Huh. You want to hear my own examples Absolutely. of that? I have a few. And it seems like I, I had a really pivotal point in my own uh, career, <laughs> if you want to call it that, about a year, year and a half ago. It's when a lot of things changed. And the two things specifically that I'll mention. Number one was this idea of quitting. And historically from 2009 to like 2017, I created like 50, 60 online businesses, websites, blogs, e-com, physical products. I literally made uh, the large chalkboard company.com. That was, that was a thing. I sold exactly one and then I decided <laughs> never again. Um, nice. I did a lot of things and it was shiny object syndrome and several of those things could have been insanely successful. Probably if I had stuck with them more than like literally six weeks and I was like on to the next thing, six weeks, it's not working. I'm doing something different. And I had this track record of that. So when do even blog came along at some point, I was like, I'm seeing a little bit of traction and it is actually what I enjoy doing. I'm like, I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting baby. And the truth is, I should have quit or not quit completely, but I should have stopped trying the things that I was trying. Mm. And I did about a year ago and I still have to even blog. I'm never going to get rid of the brand, but I stopped publishing YouTube podcast, 
blogging I haven't done in like three years for do you even blog or whatever. Like I, I, I essentially quit and good God, like I was so afraid to do it, man. I was like, people say, don't quit. That's what the influencers are yelling at me for a decade. Mm. And no, that's, that's actually not really wise advice at all mm. at some point. Mm. Um, and then the other one was trying to be an entrepreneur, quote unquote, or CEO with a team and employees and contractors and freelancers and an accountant and like all these other things trying to be like, what is the thing they used to say from the, that e-myth book work on your business, not in your business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was another thing that influencers shouted. I hate that. I hate yeah. it. And about a year and a half ago, I was like, I just want to, I just want to create content. Yeah. I'm a content creator. I'm I don't even know what that, what does that quote mean? Work on your business, not in your business. What is that? I don't even know what that means. It really, well, that was um, Michael Gerber's The E-Myth Revisited. And his point was basically like outsourcing, leverage your time in these ways, that sort of stuff, right? Oh, got it. Okay. Like, that makes sense. If you want to spend less time in or on your business, but you want to have it profitable and growing, like you need, you need to hire people, basically. Got that's, it. that's that book in a nutshell. There you go. Yeah. Now you don't have to pay $10 to read it. <laughs> um, but I, I'm not that person. I didn't want to be that person. And so about a year ago, I was like, I actually just want to blog again. And since then, I've been blogging like every day. Um, it's exactly like you said. I've written 2,500 plus blog posts wow. over the past like decade or whatnot. And yeah. it's to a point now where I write and create faster than like trying to use AI. Like every couple of months, I'm like, I'm going to give Jasper.ai another try. Yeah, Let's see I if I can make it work. It. And then at the end of the day, I'm like, fuck it. I could have written the entire thing by now. Like I, I, I just, I can do it. I've done it so much. And honestly, it just, will, that's what makes me happy. And so stop, I stopped trying to be the entrepreneur, honestly. And I just went back to what I really wanted to do, which is create content. And I figured out a way to, um, to make it work financially speaking. So that's my, I'm just talking yeah. about myself. No, that's, 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 but that's what you, that's what you brought up. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's awesome. Like, when, like I know we're, I don't even know when, what time it is, but um, as I look at my clock on my yeah, computer, so I, I, I actually you go. do know what that is. Real, real quick, I was going to say the only time that I uh, ever tried the whole team thing, I moved to New York City after I sold the majority of Viral Nova. And li- like, I'm not exaggerating this. It was the most unhappy time of my adult life, for sure. Well, I guess my entire life, my childhood was fine, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but it was, it was horrible. And, and it just, all I wanted to do was just get back to creating cool, cool content. So I agree with you on, mm-hmm. on, on that. Know thyself. It's like yeah. that. It's like in the matrix, right? So like Neo, you know what that says? Know thyself. Yeah. It's a good movie, Scott. You're a child yeah. of the nineties. I know you know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. About. Yeah, I do. I do. All right. So let's, let's wind down on I can't keep any longer. Where would you have people follow you? Twitter. What's your Twitter and email? I'm guessing. What's your What's your Twitter handle? Twitter. Um, you can You can just go to to. Well, my Twitter handle is actually Scott in the world. Um, I was going to change it to Scott DeLong, but somebody has it, and I just I signed that up 2006. Anyway, that's my Twitter, Son or just B. or just go to scottdelong.com if you want. There's some some Scott good DeLong. stuff there. Um, but yeah, and, and you can sign up for the email there as well if you would like to follow the challenge. But That's where I want to point people. Well, I mean, I imagine you'll probably be emailing people even after the challenge. But uh, your your emails are legit, so I'll point people thanks. there. Yeah, thanks. Great. Yeah, there's a challenge page on the site, so or whatever. <laughs> However you want to do it, I don't care. Yeah, you know, just just follow me. Just follow me. It's fine. All right, Scott, brother, it's been a lot of fun on yeah, our, our first date here. Thanks for coming on. This has been a delight. For sure. This was great. Thanks.